ladies and gentlemen, um, you are welcome to this uh, webinar, to this event. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, uh, we are looking for an exciting moment uh, this morning. And I'm sure uh, the digital space, uh, the tourism um, uh, digitalization space in Africa, it's uh, becoming exciting. And the reason why the African Digital Leadership Innovation Network, uh, how do we deploy the services in various uh, regions? Because uh, the tourism space is involving uh, different regions in Africa, and that requires dif different uh, requirements. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for your time today uh, to join us. And uh, let us really look at the sustainability roadmap in the in the digi in deploying digital solution in the in the African uh, digital space. So uh, we'll be uh, discussing today, and uh, we have esteemed speakers uh, from South Africa, from North Africa, from uh, West Africa as well, and different regions in Africa, and our our friends also from Europe. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And at the same time, right now, I would like to start uh, Mr. Siabulela, who is the president of the South African Chamber of Tourism and Industries. Uh, he has excused himself. He's going to be a little bit late this morning. Uh, he has to attend to some very urgent uh, issues. And uh, Maria, uh, uh, Maria Angie uh, Lundi also um, is will be, we'll be late a little bit as well. But this morning, uh, we have already online uh, Johnny uh, Muteba, who is uh, the founder of Pan-African Chamber of Commerce in Johannesburg. You are welcome. And with me, I have Mr. Hamut Wimmer, who is the founder and CEO of the Outdoor Active uh, in, in Germany. And this is a digital uh, outdoor uh, 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 establishment, and uh, they are doing a lot already in Europe and in other parts of the world. So you are welcome to join us, uh, Hamut uh, Wimmer. Thank you for your time. And Katrina, um, this is the second time you'll be joining us. <laughs> you were in the first uh, webinar as well. I thank you again for your time. Thank you for your passion for Africa. And uh, definitely, we all do this together. And uh, we are, I have Mr. Chidi Duru, uh, who is the co-founder of Codent Tech Hub uh, in Nigeria, and also a trainer with the Google uh, Digital Skills for Africa. Uh, Mr. Chidi Duru, you are welcome. Thank you so much. And I have Mr. Tulani Nzima, uh, who is the former South African Tourism uh, Board uh, CEO. Uh, is also on board with us. I uh, thank you. Uh, we will look forward to your uh, <clears throat> to your experience already, and uh, to to guide us in the in, in, in the in the right direction. Thank you so much. I have also Mr. Uh, Nguyama Boye uh, from Ghana. He is uh, in the Department of Eco Tourism uh, Research and Hospitality. Uh, is be joining us from uh, from the university. And uh, we look forward to, to, to his input. Thank you so much. Also, I have Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ayanda uh, Saki from South Africa, the founder and CEO of Antidigital Limited in South Africa. You are welcome. Thank you so much. And I have Mr. Marcin Jamblowski, uh, Vice President, <coughs> Chamber of Commerce and exporters, uh, importers in Poland, and is very versatile, is, is, is well connected in Africa. And uh, so that is what we have today. And also um, there are some colleagues that will be joining us uh, from uh, the consulting firm uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Tunisia. Uh, as soon as they come on board, I will let you know. So. Each speaker will, will, will start with uh, Johnny, uh, just seven minutes. Uh, give us your introduction and presentation, and uh, we'll look up from there. Uh, you have access to the, uh, to the presentation. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you so much, Ken, for uh, before before we go before we move ahead. My co-founder, uh, my co-moderator, uh, uh, is online also. Just came online. Ahmed uh, Amuda is the CEO of Amda in, in in Tunisia. So he'll be co-moderating with me this morning. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Ken, for for this. Uh, you know, putting this together. And I am seeing Ayanda, I think the last time I saw her was like in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. <laughs> so you have brought a person who disappeared from me um, here. So Ayanda, good morning. Um, I think COVID happened. COVID, when you don't see people for such a long time, COVID has actually been kind of introduced in the, in the middle. Yeah. So looking forward to engaging again now, more exciting projects that we are developing. So thank you so much. As Ken said, I am uh, the founder and chairman of the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce. I set the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce here in South Africa in 2015. But before that, I worked for the French South African uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And funny enough, chambers of commerce don't want to leave me alone. Um, I was approached yesterday uh, to be part of the BRICS Chamber of Commerce. I'm like, all right. So I will not, I will not say no to that. I'm in Durban, South Africa, uh, for the BRICS Youth uh, Summit. Uh, it was really an exciting uh, event. So Durban is a beautiful city, and I will also be speaking from the digital tourism ecosystem. Ken, I didn't see the questions, so I was running uh, in, out of time this morning. We were, we were this gala dinner that finished very, very late. So, <laughs> so I am going to speak on what I truly believe is needed from an ecosystem uh, perspective. So my, my point of departure really is that, you know, Africa's destination marketing organizations need to work with internet service providers and, of course, develop initiatives that will create a digital tourism ecosystem uh, on the African continent so that we can also attract uh, tourists from all over the place, all over the globe, coming into the African continent. Now, the, this digital tourism ecosystem for me is about creating precision marketing methods that will attract foreign travelers by market segmentation and targeted advertising. The numbers we have as a chamber uh, and these numbers are out there, is that global outbound tourism travelers are expected to touch about 1.8 billion uh, by 2030. And it is because of these numbers that digital tourism ecosystem is going to be more relevant for the destinations uh, to leverage on the emerging digital environment. As a Chamber of Commerce, we speak to tourism uh, promotion agencies, marketing promotion agencies, investment promotion agencies, and we truly believe that by amplifying on the work that is done digitally, by promoting tourism, by promoting experiences, it is really going to be a very big opportunity. And we saw what happened during COVID. People actually were sitting at home, but they could also imagine being in this particular site um, to experience what's happening in those particular spaces. Um, but what is digital tourism ecosystem? It is a technological infrastructure that is supporting an improved networking and interaction between the enterprises and stakeholders of tourism sector in a digital environment. And we truly believe that what has happened with technology over the last three years or so, you know, can cause the radical transformation of digital tourism ecosystem by offering really enhanced traveling uh, experience. What then can this digitalization of tourism do uh, for the African continent? By 2025, digitalization of tourism industry is expected to generate up to 305 billion US dollars. This is basically due to increased profitability, but it's also going to lead to migration of more than $100 billion net worth from the traditional players to new competitors. It will generate benefits worth about $700 billion for customers 
through cost and time savings while reducing environmental footprints and, of course, better security and safety. But it's also going to create a new generation skilled jobs inside and outside the travel ecosystem, displacing existing ones. As a chamber, the conversation around skill development is really, really important. We do work with universities. I think there's about 10 universities now in our ecosystem. Even here in Durban, I was speaking to uh, people from various universities this morning here to just see how we can bring in projects like these, like the event we did with the BRICS Youth um, Summit to entice more people. I was talking to all of these young people who came from Russia, India, China, and Brazil to come to visit South Africa more. But at the same time, what we're looking at here, especially from the digital ecosystem, is really easy accessibility of digital tools. It is about enriching the traveler's knowledge with updated information. It's about generation of niche tourism markets. It's about rising spending power of the millennials, influence of social media channels, but also the ease of tour planning and convenient payment systems through e-commerce platforms, and of course, employment generation. We really, really want to make sure that as a continent that is really battling youth unemployment, to just give you the numbers, about 10 million young people leave, uh, graduate every single year, but only 3 million of those are absorbed by the marketplace. This was before the pandemic. This was before COVID, when our economies were growing, uh, yet the jobs were not uh, created. So we want to make sure that as an organization working the space for innovation technology uh, in entrepreneurship, we also need to analyze the drivers of technological innovation, you know, in digital landscape and scope in tourism. But at the same time, we need to assess the component of digital communication uh, from the digital tourism ecosystem. So here, it is an ecosystem mindset where the players in the private sector and the public sector, institutions of high learning, chambers of commerce like ours, tourism promotion bodies can work together to make sure that this actually uh, does happen. Now, as a creative, as a filmmaker, I'm also looking at how culture, you know, cultural tourism can play a very critical role, especially from a digital, uh, you know, uh, marketplace perspective. But for culture to be included, I cannot promote tourism without promoting culture. I mean, I'm talking about the work we do at the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce. But for this to happen, we need to make sure that the African artists, I believe they are the ambassadors of our continent, they are able to showcase where they are coming from. So how do we enable discoverability of new talent, right? With there's TikTok, there's all of these platforms as well, uh, but it can also be place-based. So it can be conversations, content produced by young talent from South Africa here in Durban or in Cape Town or Johannesburg or Harare or Accra. At the same time, we want to make sure that we can fuel digital enable uh, enabled business models? How do we build digital literacy? How do we support youth development, really? How do we make sure that we can embed accessibility and inclusion? How do we build internal expertise? How do we activate digital partnerships? But at the same time, we need to build a national digital culture program, right? At the South African government level, I was speaking to our Ministry of Arts and Culture yesterday here at the conference, to make sure that we have a national strategy for digital uh, cultural experience so that we don't only speak to people who know things, we engage that kind of a killing two birds with one stone. Now, this digital cultural strategy for me, that of course enables tourism, um, becomes then a vision for a digitally enabled and thriving art and cultural uh, industry that will provide a framework to guide the approach and priorities for digital development. So I'm linking, like I said earlier on, uh, the digital cultural strategy uh, with digital tourism leadership. Um, and of course, harnessing the opportunities presented by, by, by digital, you know, in terms of broadening the social, economic, and cultural value of arts and culture to African society or South African society. We also need to see how we can develop digital capabilities that will enable a more dynamic 
a resilient art and cultural workforce. Uh, but of course, digital present opportunities for African art and culture to reach broader audiences beyond the borders of our continent. So when a video is put on YouTube, you saw during COVID with Jerusalem, you know, the, the Russian uh, delegation was asking me last night, where's Jerusalem, that song? Where's Jerusalem, that song? At the gala dinner yesterday. I said, them, don't worry, they will play it. The moment they play that song, I'm linking Jerusalem to South Africa as a place. It's a South African song that was watched by millions of people around the globe when we were confined to our homes. So when they were talking about Jerusalem, because they know it is a South African song, right? They were sitting in Russia. All of us were sitting all over the globe. But that song, the affinity of the song with South Africa and the dance and all of that, I believe can be uh, actually developed further. Um, so these are conversations we're also taking into the BRICS Culture Forum that we'll be organizing actually uh, this year. And why is this important? We saw that the live venues were, were shut down uh, because, of, because of the pandemic. Many artists and organizations you know, responded by presenting content online uh, providing audiences with new opportunities to connect virtually and experience art. As you experience art like Jerusalem, South African music, you want to know where this artist is coming from. This is the South African artist. This is what I've been saying to this government of ours for a very long time, so that we can, we, everybody really started dancing to Jerusalem. It was really a moment. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we can enable collaborations between the technology sector, the arts and cultural industry, but of course, tourism, so that we can stimulate the support uh, you know, for further innovation and experimentation. So I run an organization called Blacks in Technology um, here in South Africa. It's a US-based foundation I brought here in 2021. One of the things we wanna do as well in there is to make sure that we connect the ecosystem, the tech ecosystem, uh, black tech ecosystem in the US, we have about 70 chapters. So for us as well to achieve this cultural uh, digital leadership in Africa, we need to tap into the African diaspora. The thank African you, diaspora. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, so, quite uh, very interesting what you're doing. And uh, definitely uh, we'll come back to you again. And uh, uh, we'll take now the, the next speaker. Um, uh, Mr. Duru Chidi uh, from Nigeria, uh, please over to you. Thank you very much. I wish I had to Yes, please. We can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you're a bit, uh, not very clear. I don't know if you better, you better now. Is it better now? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. Okay, no, for me. Is it better now? Please, for me, for me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Is it better now? Oh, okay. Okay. I think it should be better now. Okay, it's getting better. I can hear you okay. clearly. It's better now, right? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chedi. I'm Chedi Duru from Nigeria. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, quickly, a quick one about me. I um, I co-found Kodan Technology Hub, which is basically a company that um, teaches children from age five and above coding and robotics and um, Currently, we are doing that in Nigeria, empowering children to learn technology at early age, and also to be contributors of technology and not just consumers. Thank you very much. So this morning, I'll be talking basically on the opportunities in tech. Some minutes, let's see back at the slide. I'll be talking about capacity building and job and jobs out there. Sorry, my slide, I can't find it. So um, 
So for the opportunities and the job out there, I'll first of all start with the place of capacity building. And, you know, for just a minute, trying to share my slide. Okay. Okay, I can't find it now. It's, it's a bit, that will be hanging my system. So, um, we are talking about digital leadership in Africa towards the industry, and I'll be basically talking about capacity building and the jobs out there. So, when we start talking about the digital leadership in Africa, the place of capacity building is very, very important because um, after the COVID, um, the COVID taught us a lot of lessons um, for us that I needed to. Um, tech, you know, it opened us to the possibility that yes, one can really stay at home and still go to school and still get the same value you get in the classroom. And it has exposed us over here in, in giving more attention to capacity building because when we talk about the, when we talk about the leadership, the digital leadership in Africa. Capacity building is very, very important because we can't take the place of leadership as business owners, as policy makers, as government representatives, if we don't have the capacity that will help us to take charge of that particular space. And this capacity we are talking about is beyond what we get from the four walls of the classroom. The digital space has given us the opportunity that anyone can be anywhere in the world and you Come what you want to be and interact and let's work with anybody. But the most important thing is the penetration of internet, which gives you the platform to have access to these facilities and explain an infrastructure. So um, on the capacity part is 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 a is a very uh, crucial matter whereby you, young men, young women need to be exposed to opportunities. Um, locally and internationally, that will give them this leverage, that will give them these openings to get these um, skills. One thing we've understood from the little projects we've done over the time here in Nigeria is the place of awareness. There is a lot of programs that helps in capacity building, but the place of awareness is still an issue. Young people don't really know that these opportunities are out there because they are not getting enough awareness and enough information about these opportunities. So, um, as 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 um, as a group, as an ecosystem, is very very important. We look at the part of creating more awareness on the part of making these um, opportunities open. And, and, and accessible to the young people. Now, the job aspects which have to do with um, boosting the economy and making Africa a more and better place for investments, the job aspect is also very key, which cannot be well, overemphasized and which cannot also be achieved if we don't have the necessary capacity to take this job. Over and over again, we are working on a project here in Nigeria where we are training 100,000 young people every year on digital skills cutting across um, or 16 different subjects. And the little exposure we've had for the two cohorts, which we've done um, 40,000 already, we've come to notice that we have a lot of young people out there between the age bracket of 18 and 35 that are out there without jobs. The issue is not that, is that jobs are not available, but the issue is that the, most of them don't have the required skills and most of them don't have the knowledge to take up these jobs. So that place of um, capacity building, which have to do with enough awareness for the young people to leverage and be part of it is very important because there are really job out there, but because they don't have the skills because they don't have the technical know how to take those jobs. We keep hearing that jobs are not out there. So finally, I don't know how much time I have. I'd love to use my slide. 
I'm just picking some things. It's like, um, so finally, so for the revolution of for the revolution of the um, the, the top tourism industry, you know, these two factors that are brought um, up this morning, the aspect of capacity building and the aspect of jobs, is something that is of very good, um, is of very important to 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 um, the ecosystem I represent with the country. So the place of majorly the place of awareness you know, in reaching out to more people to know about this and the place of awareness also engaging young people to opportunity because in terms of tourism, the digital part of it, if we have young people that have more skills, that can build products in Africa, those products can attract people outside Africa to come into Africa, and those are also part of tourism. So imagine young people setting up hubs in South Africa, and um, robotics hubs where children can build wonderful and amazing things. Imagine when um, um, somebody in Uganda setting up something like that. Imagine when somebody in Rwanda is, um, is building um, an indigenous kind of drone that can help to carry out one or two activities for the local market. So these things are things that can also attract you know, investors, attract attention, and also boost tourism in Africa. But the place of capacity building, getting these skills, getting away about these skills is very, very important. So I think I'll stop there and wait for the question as a section. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate your, your presentation. Uh, it's quite uh, very, very informative. Uh, now we take uh, our next speaker, um, Mr. Uh, Amut Wima uh, from, from Germany uh, to give us the perspectives uh, from Europe and uh, what uh, could be uh, some uh, recommendation for Africa. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And I am going to present here a solution that we have built over the past 30 years. So we are a company called OutdoorActive and we are in the outdoor tourism since about 30 years. And we are driven by our values, which is mainly all under the topic of sustainability. What are we doing? So in the end, it's the, the most important uh, sentence is we are cr creating meaningful interaction between the outdoor community and the offering of the officials. That means we are bringing all the offering of the officials in a digital system. And the digital system is uh, actually a digital structure that is known since about 150 years. It's all the travel guide books. So these books uh, have all the content of the, of the tourism destinations in a useful and structured way, like talking about the people and the climate and the beauty, uh, but also um, showing the places where you can sleep and uh, where you find something to eat. So this is the structure in which we are um, integrating all the data from the tourism destinations. And we are bringing all of the participants together that are stakeholders in tourism. Here you can see only a handful. We are working with uh, four and a half thousand uh, of brands and uh, they are coming from all uh, industries that have actually stakes in tourism. So it's of course always starting with the destinations itself, uh, but also adding uh, the content from the hotels, from the tour operators, from the businesses on the ground, but also bringing in other brands. And this is uh, then in the end the system that is uh, that you can call crowdsourcing. So all the people are working together and create a digital 
uh, twin of their part of the world. So um, that means all the hotels, all the local guides, all the tour operators, all the DMO uh, people working with the DMOs um, create their content that they know the best in a digital form. And then in the end, the result is a travel guide. This is how it looks in the digital form for a, for a region in Germany. So we are working already in about 30 or 35 countries, mainly based in Europe, but also US and Asia is uh, evolving now. And this is uh, going around the world. And the digital travel guide is also available on smartphones and you can take it with you also in rural areas where you do not have a um, connection to the internet, you can save everything offline. So this is a community growing. Um, we do have many millions of users. We do have uh, four and a half thousand business partners and we generate a lot of interactions and visibility for the content of our partners. So we have developed a full uh, 360 degree te technology suit. So there is nothing else needed. So if, if a partner, if a destination in South Africa uh, decides to work with us, you just get access, you get an account and you get the training and the onboarding. And it, uh, it's not very expensive. So you just pay a monthly fee, it starts from 100 euros per month. It's uh, affordable, and then you can start creating content. So this is uh, full serviceized uh, technology, so it's all hosted by us, and you just have an account. And this is how it looks on the back side. Um, there is a strong tool to manage content, to manage community, to have the analytics, to have the reportings. And these reportings also um, show the community engagement. So there are questions and answers and comments and reviews and everything from the community. So you build up a white label, a community under your brand when you work with us. And then you have a digital guest that you can talk with. Guests can also ask you um, about the local conditions. And then we can put that all on, on maps and heat maps. So this is our analytics tool. And this is how it looks on different days. And finally, we also can uh, bring it down to the single trails or places and measure uh, how they are frequented, how many people are outside right now. So these, these views are the live views and these views are then the trail views. And uh, this is uh, the result of the report. And we also, if the headline is sustainability, so this is what drives us the most. We help the trail managers, for instance, giving them free accounts and digitalize all the trails. Um, we also pay for uh, nature parks. 1% uh, of the revenues will be spent for nature protections. And we also support search and rescue teams, for instance, or we take care about standardizations, all the certification um, labels and digitalize the data behind that. So this was in a nutshell what we do and we would strongly recommend you guys or all the tourism destinations to give it a try. So we are helping the people with the knowledge. We have trainings, we have um, workshops, we have onboarding programs and uh, you can even start it with a free account. And I would recommend you to invite all the local tourism organizations into workshops. Uh, we can support you with that and train them. And uh, then you can get also a sort of independent from tour operating uh, oriented um, tourism. So we are also serving then in the end the, the fully independent traveler um, and uh, work with tour operators as well. But this is uh, actually the goal to have both, so, both sorts of tourism actually running in a destination. So that was it from my side. Um, thank you very much for listening.
Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Hamad. Uh, it's quite uh, very informative, and thank you for all the uh, propositions. Uh, definitely, I will uh, follow it up. And uh, of course, we have uh, several programs uh, in our next step roadmap. Uh, definitely, I will get back to you uh, to see how we, we kickstart uh, all this in Africa. Thank you. And uh, now I call on the next speaker, um, Ayanda from South Africa, please. You're welcome. Um, uh, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. It is my first time here, so some of the things I might say may be a repetition for some of you. Forgive me for that. Uh, but you will see that as I continue with the conversation, um, it will put some things in perspective for us in terms of uh, why we're thinking this way in South Africa and what are the things that we want to do based on what um, uh, data points or anecdotal observations that we see as trends that are driving us to move forward in a particular way. Just as a way of introduction, I wanted to say, I wanted to talk about the state of tourism in South Africa in particular. Um, South Africa had a slump in tourism during COVID. Uh, the arrivals decreased by about 70% uh, to compared to pre-COVID levels. Uh, we do see now that in 2022, we started to, uh, be, to, to to, to start, we started to get more people coming here, mainly because of the campaigns that are taking place uh, on social media. I think social media has been powerful for South Africa. Case in point, what Johnny mentioned before about Jerusalem, a lot of South Africans decided, you know, if you're going to lock us down and you're going to keep, it, keep us indoors, we're going to use every other avenue to get uh, our message out there into the world, whether it's art, it's music, or it's sharing travel stories. But what we found more powerful was the the travel stories of experts or rather uh, international travelers that are coming to South Africa. YouTube is littered with videos of people tra uh, coming to South Africa from America, uh, from many parts of the world who are sharing on a constant basis their experiences in South Africa. This has created such momentum and I'm going to get to some statistics in a, in a few minutes that we are seeing uh, quite a boom in tourism in South Africa. 20, late 2022, 2023, we have received over 5 million visitors in South Africa in that period. We have uh, we have now seen that South Africa has been nominated as the best travel destination in the world. We're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, um, momentum built 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 on these platforms and also the initiatives of the South African Tourism uh, Organization in South Africa partnering with a lot of stakeholders in the industry, including airlines, including operators, um, but we still have a long way to go in integrating these partners right to some of the speakers' points to reach uh, parts of Africa and to make that network a lot wider than just South Africa and, and really elevate the narrative of tourism as a as a, as a contributor to GDP. Uh, last year, I, we know, or, or pre-COVID, we know that uh, um, uh, tourism contributed 7% 7, 7 to overall Africa GDP. Uh, we want to get back to those levels. And one of the things that's highly mentioned everywhere where you speak to customers about South Africa and Africa in particular is connectivity. And as a as a as a as a technology <laughs> specialist, I really want to put this into perspective because. Uh, what we do in Africa is that while we're building our connectivity, we also are building our mobile uh, adoption because when people cannot connect via mainstream connectivity through broadband or 3G, 4G, whichever one you want to choose, people complement that with connecting via their phones. And I want to put up a slide quickly just so I can show you some stats that show that some of the momentum we have really is actually the balance of those two things. While we know we do not have a lot of connectivity in rural areas, a lot of people, they have smartphones and they use smartphones really to drive their message. And while we have connectivity in urban centers, people use a combination of the two as well, depending on which works for them at a particular time. And I think this is the balance that we need to take anywhere in the world. There are governmental, private, 
public partnerships that are taking place to try and close the gap, the digital divide between the urban centers and the rural centers. And I want to bring to your attention that actually in South Africa, rural areas in South Africa are not classified as rural, by the way. They are classified as urban areas perhaps semi-urban areas, and then you have traditional areas, which is land that was given to the kings and the, and the, and the uh, indigenous uh, people of South Africa, including myself, by the way. But yeah, the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, South Africa has started a new private public partnership with Vodacom. Vodacom is now pulling a big pipe that's going to go on the east side of South Africa. It's going to benefit also Africa. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a two Africa cable, lots of articles online. I do have references on my presentation as well. I'm going to just quickly go through it, uh, where you can read up a lot more about what this is going to do for rural areas, because we are seeing a rise in ecotourism. We are seeing a rise in, uh, um, in people coming to South Africa to see nature. We are seeing a rise in game drive we're seeing a, a, a rise in people even considering South Africa for retirement uh, and coming to South Africa for health purposes as well. So all of these things coming together require a wide collaboration in the ecosystem between all players. And I'm, and I'm really proud to say that actually some of these stats that I'm sharing with you, I didn't get directly from the tourism uh, company of South Africa. I got them from Home Affairs, some of them. Some of them I got them from, you know, players in the medical industry. Uh, it's just now you see that they are, they are reporting in Salas, whereas if we could have a concentrated effort uh, uh, with uh, collaborating partners coming together, this could really create impact for South Africa. And I really believe that it could create wider impact for Africa as a whole. I'm going to just quickly, if the, the chair allows me, just go to some aspects of the presentation in terms of the GMSA report and some of the research to just show you that, you know, South Africa in terms of connectivity, including Africa, is making inroads using whatever they have. But with our challenge also is that we need to mobilize young people because they are the ones who have these technologies and tools in their hands. So if we draw these young people and make this attractive to them as a career and as, a, as even like as a social influence, I mean, the rise of social, social influencers is like, is, it has a huge impact. And if we can take our young people and tell them, you, you can be a social, a social influencer. YouTube allow, uh, gives the platform for free. You can start anywhere. There's quite a lot of opportunities in there that we can start exploring as a way to close the unemployment gap as well. Taking into consideration always well, how are we growing in terms of the technology foundation that we need to elevate our tourism industry and the contribution to DGP and improving people's lives in South Africa and Africa as a whole. I'm going to be very quick. I'm just going to show some stats and just to give you a sense that actually while we do have certain gaps, connectivity in Africa is not really a, a big issue. It's just how we make uh, uh, we make it uh, an impetus in how we use it to drive the campaigns that we want to drive in South Africa. Two seconds. If you say something weird, please forgive me, Afrat. <laughs> but I don't think I have. <laughs> Give me a second. Um, oh, I have the presentation open and I just want to make sure I can share it here, hopefully. Uh, windows I, I got it here yeah, thank you very much so yeah so i wonder can you see my screen yes yes yes, yes. thank you so yes. much i wanted to just share quickly the connectivity trends in africa and i'm i'm really not gonna uh, uh, i will touch on south africa but i really want to bring this message about africa as well uh, in 2022 to 2023 our main driver for growth was the connection to to, to 3g and and very lots of 3g and very minimum 4g and with COVID, what has happened is that the the connectivity has been accelerated from 4g to 5g which means that south South Africa and Africa now can share video content. Video content can lead to a number of social entrepreneurs that can, you know, share a lot of messages about their locations, what is attractive about them, and share with the wider, I mean, with the world in terms of reach. And really that, in my view, can be one way of driving uh, uh, campaigns around destinations in Africa for whatever reason, whether it's ecotourism or it's, uh, it's just 
coming for leisure. 5G adoption growing uh, in, in Africa as of 2023, 2024, and we're estimating that by 2030, we will have about a tipping point of about 70% of Africa connected to 5G. This is where we say it gives us a, a advantage in terms of bridging that di digital divide, especially because the cities have been over visited. Yes, you always find something new to come and see in South Africa cities because it's a big country and you've got five cities that can offer you five different things, but you also have very much uh, a natural space that can really uh, uh, that we can really tap into for people to see the, the scenery and see the cultures of South Africa. Data usage also increased in South Africa before we were at an average in Africa, sorry, we were at an average of four gigs per person per, per month. Now we've gone up to about 19 gigs. You can start to see the adoption of the technology and I do believe that when we start to open up the uh, adoption in, in, in semi urban areas and start to see those uh, those uh, uh, um, those travel destinations the data usage is going to increase as well for people if that if 5g starts to take root we also in south africa have a, an initiative that was started by the government where each home is going to now get 10 gigs uh, of free data from the government every month this i think is going to boost uh, 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 young people especially who are very keen to use technology and who have technology in their hands uh, 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 to start getting on board and start uh, bringing some narrative about Africa and about South Africa and the spirit of Africa that, you know, can bring a lot more visitors into the country. This, uh, that's why I would say the two Africa cable, big, big game changer for Africa, especially for the 2030 target of about 70% of Africa on uh, connected on a super um, uh, super high bandwidth uh, 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 network. Uh, we're looking at uh, 100, and, 100 and some 105 terabytes uh, per seconds of connectivity uh, at that point. Then I want to go to my next slide if I can, just to quickly go through the um, the mobile trends. I want to tell you that in Africa today we have over 60% of people, young people under 15 year olds they have a smartphone they have a, by 2030 we're looking at about 73 75 percent i think it's an estimation because already i know in south africa each household has more than four smartphones per household and what is what this net network that is coming this to africa cable is going to do is going to improve connectivity because everyone is restricted by the fact that they are connecting with their own money they are buying on the phone especially in rural areas when you bring a, a bigger network especially on the eastern side of africa this is going to unlock a lot more opportunity we will see that from gdp contributions of about 16 percent right now in africa i do believe that we're going to see a much bigger gdp contribution of technology in general uh, in africa by 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 2030 Mobile money, I want to talk about that is driving a lot of uh, a growth in Africa because I mean, if, even if I take some time just reading some of the uh, feedback of the travelers that are coming to Africa, they always say, you you know, carrying cash is such a big problem. Also puts people at risk, I think, from a security perspective. And the whole thing about mobile money is that it allows people to move around without carrying cash and having many uh, alternatives in terms of making payments in Africa. And this for me is, is, is also an Another biggest game changer in that you can carry your phone, you can meet a, a, tour, a tour guide, whether it's a young person or whoever, they have a smartphone. They can already do uh, Samsung Pay, uh, Apple Pay, uh, all of, I don't know if Huawei has one already, and they can facilitate the payments right there, right then, and without anyone, you know, transacting, transacting in cash. Currently, Africa is transacting at 90%, and I really think 90% uh, with cash, and I think that this is something that as digital players, something we really need to first track and look into and try and make sure that everyone who is in Africa and who travels to Africa is able to facilitate transactions seamlessly without having to carry a lot of money in their hands. This is just to give you some sense of uh, uh, adoption and utilization of social media platforms in marketing and in even business 
businesses now have kind of taken social marketing as a way to market generally because of the constraints of the economy. So, I mean, if, you, if businesses are doing that, what more from a tourism perspective? And we see that actually cumulative effect of these platforms in how South Africa has become uh, one of the leading uh, 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 tourist uh, uh, destinations in Africa. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Thank you so much. I do have some acknowledgments there, but I will leave it at that and, and uh, so that we can engage a bit more. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to get back to the presentation. Really, this is what I wanted to bring to you today. Where we don't have connection, rest assured, South Africans are connecting via their mobile phones and they are making themselves visible and they are making themselves known. I think our challenge now is to make sure we bring young people into the fold aggressively through government, private, public partnerships and really use this as an opportunity to close the, the, the digital divide and to close the unemployment gap, especially among young people in South Africa. I thank you, Chair, for the opportunity, and I look forward to engaging with the rest of the speakers today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's very, very, very uh, elaborate. Uh, we really thank you for the presentation. And at the same time, uh, we'll come back to you at um, the, uh, the general section uh, when we get started. And now I call on uh, Katrina um, from Italy, um, the CEO of Augmented City. Uh, please, um, over to you. Thank you. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes I can oh. hear you. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'd like to share my screen because anyway, uh, just a second. Do you see my screen? Yes, yes, I Go can on. see it. Uh, yeah. So if something is wrong with uh, the content, please let me know because I have some video content. So, uh, well, I'm quite, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, and actually, it's my second time. And uh, well, I um, I tried to compare yesterday evening uh, two presentations uh, just to see uh, actually <laughs> where we are right now because uh, last year I uh, presented also some some kind of uh, figures, some kind of um, uh, results uh, of digitaliz uh, digitalization in uh, Italy. Well, for Italy, um, actually, uh, tourism is one of the main sectors, economy sectors, and of course, uh, government and um, actually uh, the country uh, tries to support uh, this uh, sector a lot. Uh, we have national program of um, uh, uh, of uh, support man, uh, of uh, support for tourism, and um, well, uh, as you know, anyway, uh, we succeed in uh, in it, and uh, uh, one of the most uh, popular destinations uh, in the world is Italy, thanks to uh, very rich uh, cultural, natural, um, and. Um, uh, tra uh, uh, traditional uh, heritage uh, of our country. Uh, well, actually, uh, it's very important to talk and to compare um, experience of our countries uh, to uh, to create a dialogue between uh, different um, uh, um, uh, countries about tourism because there are some global trends um, and that's why uh, we talk all the time about uh, sustainability, about innovation, and there are some local trends. Uh, so um, I'd like to start with some small facts about tourism uh, in Italy, and uh, maybe I will highlight some problems because uh, it could be helpful for Africa uh, in the future to avoid such uh, challenges that we face right now in Italy. Uh, so we are proud to tell um, to tell you that yes, we increased uh, our tourism. Uh, so uh, it was like about forty three percent in uh, two thousand twenty two, 
Uh, according to uh, the statistics uh, that we got from World Tourism Organization, anyway, by uh, 2030, um, it we will uh, not we, but internationally, the uh, travel, uh, the, uh, the tourism will reach to uh, billions. Uh, but at the same time. Uh, there are some problems uh, here in uh, uh, very busy destinations. Uh, for example, you can see this picture. It's the real picture of the place, uh, one of the most uh, uh, famous uh, places uh, of interest in Italy. It's Colosseum. So um, it's over tourism. Uh, we talk all the time about climate changing and about globalization and uh, artific artificiality of tourism in Italy. So uh, I will sl slightly give some um, details about each of these uh, challenges. Uh, unfortunately, in Italy still, we don't know how to face uh, in a good way, in efficient way, uh, climate changing. You know, for example, um, here, if we increase uh, if uh, the climate uh, increases somehow uh, the temperature only for four uh, grades, uh, we will have decrease of, uh, decrease of uh, tourism. Uh, and uh, the figures will, will be very um, uh, significant. Uh, over tourism, well, um, because of some uh, um, management problems because of some uh, maybe um, uh, promotional problems. Uh, we have uh, some destinations which uh, are quite uh, difficult now to uh, to visit for normal tourists because it's not safe. Uh, I mean, it's not safe because of uh, crowds of people. It's quite difficult even to walk. Uh, everything is overcrowded. And actually, um, globalization of tourism, when you come to the city uh, or you come to some kind of Italian town, you as a tourist, you would like to see some kind of traditional places, some kind of uh, normal citizens uh, who uh, live in, in, uh, in the center of the city. But unfortunately, uh, very often, you don't find them. So you stay in some kind of Disneyland uh, where everything is artificial. So you, uh, when you travel, you'd like to, to get emotion. Uh, I believe that uh, this fact is very important to emphasize uh, uh, for, for you uh, guys, uh, for you colleagues from Africa, because um, right now Africa is very, very popular among Italians. And what we are looking for uh, there as tourists, uh, it's like uh, nature, it's like traditions. We would like to try your food. We don't want to see McDonald's. We don't want to see uh, global uh, things uh, that it's possible to see everywhere. We want to have um, perception. We want to have emotions of the place uh, and to live uh, well, of course, a bit in uh, in some kind of artificial way, but we want to live moments as you live uh, there. We want to see Africa, and uh, I'm quite sure it's typical for um, every destination in the world right now. So um, um, it's not a secret that every government in the world right now talks about dig digitalization. Digitalization, um, well, as a technical person, as a um, CEO, for, or CEO of a company, technical company, who has been working for many, many years uh, with uh, computer vision, with artificial intelligence, and with uh, complex uh, systems, we, uh, we can tell you, we can guarantee you that uh, there is no magic in digitalization. And uh, there are uh, advantages and disadvantages of digitalization. Uh, we can assist uh, tourism uh, to, let's say, change uh, from quantity to quality some kind of trends. 
but we cannot change, um, for example, climate. Uh, we cannot help with uh, pollution. We cannot um, uh, manage uh, in a good way, uh, let's say, uh, sustainability uh, only partly. And today I would like to show you how, what we can offer uh, to tourism uh, in terms of sustainability. So in Europe, um, we have a big issue of energy saving, uh, of um, uh, uh, tr tradition, uh, protection, uh, and uh, territory uh, protection, because we have quite a big issue of uh, sea pollution, uh, of, um, let's say, uh, problems with... Um, see with sea life and sometimes we cannot protect it in a correct way. So what we can do with digitalization? Uh, for many years we work with uh, so-called XR uh, technology. XR technology is a new sustainable uh, way to touch, uh, for example, the super features of uh, old ancient buildings without touching them, to give uh, in a sustainable way, uh, a possibility to tourists to look at the places and to learn more about these places of interest. How we do it? We do it with uh, uh, digital twins. So dig uh, maybe uh, some of you heard about it, uh, something. Um, digital twins, uh, actually, uh, it's some kind of in digital infrastructure or um, 3D model of a real world. When you uh, build digital twin, you give possibility to uh, autonomous, uh, autonomous um, uh, vehicles to move on the streets. You give uh, eyes to the devices, so uh, you can see behind the real world. So you look at the building, you can find some extra content uh, uh, thanks to your mobile phone, focusing your mobile phone or your uh, tablet, some extra information or some kind of extra uh, content. So uh, um, we have been working with museums, hotels and uh, smart city uh, programs uh, for, for, for three years. For example, I'm from Bari, from uh, uh, South Italy, and uh, we already uh, completed the system for uh, uh, the city of Bari and for other Italian uh, big cities like, like uh, Rome, for Venice, uh, for uh, Milan. And uh, we right now have uh, digital twins in um, 200 uh, cities of the world. Uh, our system is very simple. Actually, I'll try to... Please let me know if you don't see the video. So, that's how it looks. You see uh, the empty space with a lot of uh, graphics. And you don't need anything, you just need a mobile phone, a usual mobile phone uh, that everybody has uh, these days, especially young people. Because, you know, for example, young generation, uh, they, they just need some kind of socialization uh, via smartphones. It could be bad, it could be good, it's another discussion, but they uh, live with smartphones. And they can see extra uh, content uh, via smartphones. Um, so just not to save some time, I will go to extra slides. As you can see, uh, we don't touch any uh, surface. Uh, in Italy, um, it's quite difficult, for example, to put some kind of advertising or billboard uh, in this historical uh, city center. Uh, or in some kind of uh, natural park. So uh, augmented reality XR helps a lot. That's uh, th the next video you will see. Um, it's a real demo that we did for big event.
uh, in Rome in September. So you can see you can see Colosseum, and just the advertising uh, on on the Colosseum. So big uh, billboard, video billboard, uh, right on the surface of the building. And every visitor of the city, uh, thanks to promotion uh, done by um, uh, the agency, media agency, can see extra content uh, without, um, let's say, uh, touching or without uh, even approaching uh, the building. Uh, well, uh, I, I told you that um, Africa uh, became quite popular destination for Italians. And uh, um, actually, you know, we are quite famous in Italy uh, uh, for our handmade uh, stuff, for jewelry, for uh, fashion. And now it's a big trend uh, uh, here to use some kind of uh, characteristics of, of uh, African art, uh, African um, traditions. Uh, in uh, fashion, uh, in uh, um, uh, craft art uh, of Italy. So here we are with uh, one of the most important uh, uh, jewelrists uh, in Rome. It's a historical um, uh, shop. And uh, this lady, Marta Paulillo, uh, she's very, very famous uh, in the world of jewelry, uh, actually because she is not only an uh, artist, she is a scientist in the world of uh, jewelry. She she had done a lot of research uh, and uh, uh, re um, scientific uh, works uh, um, for um, dedicated for ancient jewelry and so on. And uh, last year she went to Africa uh, just for vacation, and suddenly uh, there she found out uh, that it could be possible for her to combine, to make a new collection and to combine, um, let's say, um, uh, some kind of features of African art uh, with her next collection. Uh, so right now you can see the demo that will be presented at the end of September uh, in Rome in open space of her jewelries. Do you see my video? Can, can I? Yes, 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 oh. I can see. It. So you can see every detail of this jewelry, but part of the jewelry, the, 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 uh, this, for example, green or black or blue, is done in Africa by an African um, artist. And she then, so it's handmade, everything is handmade. And then she sent to Marta, uh, um, uh, this kind of uh, uh, draft or concept, and Martha just adds um, um, the small parts uh, in gold uh, um, to complete um, the um, the piece of uh, this uh, uh, masterpiece. Let's say. So uh, you can see that uh, anyway uh, collaboration we have. We are quite open for any change of uh, experience. And actually, thanks to such technologies, it's possible to extend the promotion of the territory for any kind of artist uh, uh, cra uh, craft studios, small uh, um, shops, and just to promote the territory. Uh, and actually, uh, XR right now shows uh, very good results in brand promotion, territory promotion, and in valorization of, uh, of uh, heritage, cultural uh, heritage of country. So that's one of the main tendencies right now uh, in Europe and, uh, let's say, in the U.S. So uh, if you have some questions, uh, I'm uh, open. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. It's quite uh, very interesting, and uh, we look forward to see how... Uh, uh, we can also uh, uh, introduce this into the African uh, tourism space. So you're, you're on board with us. So we look forward to the next steps. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. And it's now I one, look. Yes. One comment: uh, yeah. If somebody of you um, maybe somehow is interested to have some 
connections with Apulian region. It's one of the main luxury regions for tourism right now. It's called Apulia. Please let me know because I um, I am a part of uh, uh, authority group, uh, working group for tourism. So I'm responsible for digitalization. And uh, for example, um, uh, Mr. Wimmer, uh, let me know if you need some kind of contact. I'm quite open. I will be glad to, to help. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we now take the next speaker, uh, who is the former CEO of the South African Tourism uh, Agency uh, in South Africa. Um, Mr. Tulani Nzima, uh, please, over to you. You are welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ken. And let me start off with a, a typical African expression. <laughs> that is uh, to make an apology for joining you a little bit late. Uh, I'm at a disadvantage in the sense that I don't know what else would have been said, but I, I enjoyed the last presentation. And, and thank you also for correcting the initial impression that was given that I'm still the CEO of uh, South African Tourism. And I'm actually the former CEO of South African Tourism. And now the chairperson of the South African Township and Village Tourism Association. Uh, so I don't I don't want any wrong impression to go out there that says uh, Tulani Zima was parading himself as the CEO of South African Tourism. You know, in Africa, we don't like people who pretend to be kings or chiefs when they are not, uh, or even presidents for that matter. So they tell they will deal with you very harshly. So please, uh, can do make sure that it is correctly uh, explained that I'm the chairperson of the South African uh, Township and Village Tourism Association. That's not uh, it. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you so much for that. Uh, I, I'll talk initially about uh, the general experience uh, of digital tourism and the, the kind of uh, impact that it has in the African continent and the, what it has specifically for South Africa and the kind of network that I, I represent. Historically, it's, it's been very difficult to embrace technology. Whenever technology is introduced in the travel and tourism space, there has been this resistance. In, in particular, this was based on the fear that technology is going to take over the responsibility of human beings with all the experiences that they have in the travel and tourism uh, environment. At that stage, the focus was a lot more on people protecting their own incomes rather than embracing efficiencies and cost effectiveness. Uh, so it, it was an era during which each time you were bringing even the online uh, booking systems were resisted purely on the basis of the fact that people were looking at it that way, that it is not an enabler of the work that they are doing, but actually a threat to their, their, their positions at the time. So this kind of thing happened from airlines to uh, car rental environment, all the suppliers until the level of uh, the, the destination marketing agencies. I think uh, uh, as we talk about digital tourism, we need to keep in mind that um, not all the countries that we're uh, talking about in Africa have the ability to play in this ecosystem. And I think of it, as I was listening to Kat's uh, presentation a few minutes ago, it became very evident to me that uh, with all the benefits that uh, digital tourism can bring, it is important that we have an, an enabling environment where the uh, deployment of technology will be 
present in, in, in the places where we're trying to reach out to. So when I was still with South African tourism, the idea of digital tourism was quite a long distance away. I, I, I will recall the time when there was a proposal from some of the big players in Europe to install cameras in the uh, safari experience, in the safari areas to capture live um, tourism experiences in those areas. And we were a little bit skeptical about it and wondering whether this is not going to undermine the actual tourist travel uh, that we are, we are all expecting. Uh, the, the idea and the way we, are looking, we were looking at it was to say, well, uh, our main objective is to encourage people to visit our countries. So if we allow technology of that nature to happen, it will undermine people's ability to visit. Fast forward to where we are now, we've come to understand that actually it does generate interest because it allows people to experience tourism or safari ex experiences without being physically there. So that per perhaps has been the start of embracement of a, a digital a, a, a tourism. The way that we're looking at it now is that it comes with quite a lot of benefits. For us, heritage and cultural uh, sites where most authentic tourism takes place, where the most cultural and a deeper understanding of our value systems resides. It is therefore not easy to sell this unless you are part of the digital ecosystem. It, it then brings new products because most of our products and uh, tourism experiences are not easily exposed and it has become a bit dated apart from its own inefficiencies to continue to focus on uh, brochures for packaging your products and services. So we have seen an opportunity where new products easily come into the mainstream new experiences also come into the uh, new streams and we have also seen new suppliers that we can easily reach out to using uh, digital technology platforms it exposes the less visited areas of our tourism environment and um, because traditionally a lot of tour operators travel agencies sell experiences that they know that they are exposed to on a regular basis so when you, you bring in technology uh, that helps to manage and organize your travel experiences you are then able to bring in those kind of areas that are less visited traditionally but it is also the obvious benefit of cost effectiveness and efficiencies. Uh, the traditional way of booking has not been working very well lately. So our members have embraced digital technology and it has helped them in terms of the bottom line as well. It, this, when you use digital technology, it allows us to respond very quickly to the uh, uh, global travelers new demands to allow dynamic packaging of 
tourism experiences. When tourists are sitting in Canada or Asia, they are looking at buying ex tourism experiences in, South Af in, in Africa. Their understanding is that it should be easy to combine experiences at Vic Falls with that of uh, the Kruger National Park and Sun City. And the way that this can work is if you have a, a technology that allows them this dynamic uh, packaging. As I talk about these issues, uh, Ken, I'm deliberately ignoring any other uh, barriers that could be regulatory, such as the, the visa facilitations, whether this will en enable the the tourists to, in, in a dynamic way, package Vic Falls, Kruger National Park and Sun City, or Ngorongoro for that matter. But it is digital technology, the use of technology that will allow the modern traveler to be able to have all these experiences. And as I indicated earlier on, the fact that most of the tourist experiences may not have been exposed traditionally to the tour operators, but with technology and all the product owners being able to join the ecosystem. A digital technology, like any other uh, technology, can only expose those kind of environments that bring themselves to the table or they enable themselves to be part of the ecosystem. Uh, when uh, when Keith was talking about uh, the experiences in, in Italy, yes, it is very important that uh, you can augment that experience, exposing your cameras to those kind of areas. But if there's nobody creating the content, it does not help much. So we need to, in, it, we need to enable the environments. We need to make sure that the, the, those people with the uh, various tourism experiences are actually part of this system so that the new travelers' demands can actually be uh, uh, supported. Uh, what we have also noticed is that technology helps in the consolidation process when it comes to uh, the booking of the various uh, areas. Uh, it, 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 it allows, as I indicated earlier, the ability to combine various experiences from uh, the airline experience to hotel bookings to uh, the eateries and other such experiences. This is where we believe that it, for our members, it has broken the barriers. Even more important for us, we've noticed that it actually eliminates the buyer, uh, uh, the, the, the buyer bias. Uh, the, uh, I'm talking about whether you are a, a, a buyer for a, a big organization as a, a tour operator, you choose places that you know that you're comfortable with, but when it comes to digital tourism, it, it allows people to make the, the traveler to make decisions themselves based on the experiences that they have uh, seen in, 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 the, in the value system. There, there are some uh, challenges uh, well, or the downside of it like I have indicated, most of our products are not as yet as uh, developed to be able to benefit from the process of digital tourism. But that's exactly where we are going. We're looking at uh, creating uh, tools within the environment of the township and village tourism environment 
so that when you are looking for new experiences in South Africa using technology, as you put together your itineraries, we are also a, a part of that. And uh, we, we appreciate the opportunity to present a little bit of what we are doing as the Township and Village Tourism Association. And let, with that, let me thank you and stop here. I will take further questions. Thanks, Ken. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Dulani. I really appreciate your contribution. It is very, very eye-opening. And uh, definitely, we have questions for you, and we'll come back uh, at later uh, session. So right now, I would like to take uh, to invite Mr. Manel Ben uh, from Tunisia, who is also in the sustainability space, uh, also in the tourism uh, industry. Uh, Manel, please uh, over to you. Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm so sorry because I, I get this uh, information at the last moment. And it's not the first time I, I, I'm presented here for the this uh, panelist people. And I think I, can, I want to thank everyone for sharing their experiences. It's true about the, digit, uh, the digital. We started in Iberostar working on uh, digital hotels. But from what they share, Kat and also Harmut and all the others, I think that in Africa, what we need is to have uh, like the road outside, for example, for the, at least for, for us in Tunisia, because I'm working a sustainability uh, um, development in Tunisia, but uh, what we need is the digital routes for outside the doors of the hotel. So the, the example given by Hormut is uh, important because nowadays uh, clients they come to the uh, to the hotel, but they don't uh, participate to the sustainability of the local communities because they, they don't go out to the doors uh, of the hotels, and of course uh, it becomes a little bit uh, complicated for the local communities. So the idea is, if we want to digital, to do, <coughs> sorry. If we want to do this, it should be like for all the destination, not only, uh, at least for us, not only uh, in the hotels, uh, inside the hotels. So I can't say something more than this because uh, as it's the digital thing, we have uh, people for that. But I, I appreciate so much what I uh, hear you, uh, you uh, shared. And maybe it would be uh, a good point to start with the, because we are, we will have been thinking about uh, an experience between the commercial, uh, the marketing and the sustainability departments. And the idea is this is to have uh, all of them uh, together to how to gain um, support or uh, push a little bit the clients to go outside the doors of the hotels. And it's sustainable because first we are working on the destination, not only in a, in a part of uh, uh, Tunisia, not only uh, is a, not only the, the hotels themselves, but also it's uh, it's time that people start to go outside because at some point it was a, a priority of security, then it was a, a priority of uh, the all inclusive things that we have uh, almost in all our hotels. So having uh, some routes outside would be so good to, to make it in digital way. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, we appreciate uh, all the points you have, uh, you have raised. Uh, definitely, uh, we have a roadmap in Africa. <laughs> and uh, you'll be part of this. And uh, so thank you. We'll come back to you uh, later. And now I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Marcin Jamblonski, uh, who is uh, Vice President Chamber of Commerce in, in, in Poland. And he's very versatile in Africa as well, in several sectors. And uh, of course, uh, the tourism sector is very passionate uh, to him as well. Uh, Mr. Marcin, please. You are welcome. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Uh, thanks for all your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, provided earlier. Um, 
Though for those who are not familiar uh, with me, I'm uh, I, I have uh, the pres uh, the pleasure to to work in Africa since 2012. Me myself, I'm working. Uh, I'm working uh, less with the the, the, the gestures, the, the the entities in the in the sector in uh, with tourism sector. I'm working more about the the strategy planning for for them about the, the development and looking for some opportunities for business development. Either I work with the with the. Uh, um governmental in, uh, entities uh, to help them to find some the best way to make cohesion uh between the uh, the, the development and the responsibility social and environmental responsibility because this is that this is the, the what i uh heard today um your presentation was about uh from different angles from different perspectives either as a as a business uh or ngos or uh, governmental uh approach and all of those are true but the picture overall picture is a little bit slightly different um because also this is the difference of develop development the state the level of development countries and the continents the europe as a, is a well developed and have different uh, problems than africa for africa um for many countries like tunisia that were the 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 touristic sector is the uh the, the high have a high impact on on the 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 global uh tunisian gdp it's it's important what what they try to do is to bring as much tourists as as possible because it has a, the, the impact on the other hand you know like in in italy i returned from italy yesterday so so uh, i had the opportunity to tackle some some issue um with that over tourism and that's uh which which is have a tremendous impact on the on on the everyday life uh in the cities uh so i think this is the this, this is the this is the huge the, this is the huge problem for africa um africa has a chance to create the smart roadmap for development avoiding the the future problems that for example we we face the 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 rome the barcelona where for example a lot of a lot of uh flats um were um uh taken you know or the proposed in the b uh, uh, r&b uh what, what does it know r&b is uh yeah uh the the, the the rent for tourism long short rent for 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 tourists um like booking and other 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 digital the digital uh, platforms which make life everyday life of the people uh, harder it's an increase of of the prices so i think that uh, if we talk about about the smart uh, smart planning and smart development it means that africa has a chance to use the digital tools not only to increase the level of um, of, of the tourism coming and uh, f uh, to africa but also has a chance to create the smart um, overall system dedicated for the also the the those people who are not directly committed to the touristic uh, sector i think that that uh, this is about the impact of, of everyday everyday life it's very important because today in europe we discuss about the 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 uh, not only in europe but discuss about the climate change uh we discuss about the the uh, uh, um impact of the many sectors to the to, to not only to the economy but also uh to the sustainable sustainability and and sustained development of countries how can we create balance between the incomes increasing the incomes and and uh, reducing the costs uh for for uh uh, uh, uh the, so the social and and environmental costs this is very important and i think that the digital digital tourism is not only 
improvement for uh, the quality of of experience, touristic experience. And also, this is the 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 the, the tool for managing the the impact and the cost of the social and uh, the social and uh, environmental costs we should pay uh, in return of the increasing the, the incomes and the profits from uh, from touristic sector. And I, I really, being a little bit apart, I am really suffered the situation when the discussion very often is, is, is separate. This is the separate streams. The hotels discuss about the, 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 the how to improve the uh, um, how to increase the level of the tourism, how, how can we implement new, new solutions. Government talks about the, how, the, uh, uh, how can we create the, the bigger income uh, for, 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 for the country budget. The, the other entities talk about, uh, for example, environmental protection, but this, this discussion is quite separate. And and I think this is the this is for Africa. This is the very important moment because you should um, avoid avoid the uh, the the mistake made by the many European countries like uh, Cathy uh, shown that that uh, over tourism you know Rome when it's it's very difficult to decrease the level of tourists like a Venice. Uh, how how can you stop people from coming to Venice if you promote for many years the the culture, the food, the the the, the place? Uh, we we uh, we heard about the ladies devastating uh, the, the 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 people devastating the Colosseum, you know, by picking or the other ancient um, places, you know, because they should take uh, at least some part of the of the stone. Um, and of course, the, the augmented reality, the all, all uh, digital tools can help them. But I think uh, we should think how can we make, make um, them in a corporate way, not only to use the like, you know, okay, we can ex extend our experience by putting, you know, the, the something, you know, additional information. But I, I can barely, I understand, we have in the transition time when the, 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 the technology is not, is not well prepared for uh, or not fit for our uh, um, biological uh, uh, um, way. I, can, I can't uh, imagine the people, you know, uh, walking with the, with the smartphones when they stop con uh, uh, talking each other. This is what I see uh, in, in Italy. Everyone is, is looking at the smartphones without, uh, uh, without people you know, not stopping discussion each other. And, and this is, this is w we should think how can use it in the, in the, in, in the yeah, <laughs> this, is the, this, is, this is the problem. Um, I, I, had a, I had a pleasure to, to know the Lou de Cure and that's uh, so uh, uh, outdoor active. This is the, the one of the platforms, but I think um, this is every, the, everyone is trying to, uh, we, should, we need the one platform, digital platform for Africa. Uh, I think that we need, that we need the, the solution that we create the sustain, um, uh, sustain um, tourism, uh, you know, people from coming. If 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 I come to Sousse, uh okay, I can take the I can take the the, the trip to I don't know City uh, Busaid, uh, or I can go to Tatooine. Um, but in fact, you know, this this uh, this this trip, uh, they don't. It doesn't have the the impact of the of, of the social everyday life. You know, because they come, they they move. There are no interaction. Just come and and move, and the dig digital solution can help. I can imagine they help me to understand the the culture context. What is the difference between the Arabs and Berbers? What is the uh, what is the difference of 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 of, of, uh, um, of the culture? Uh, why uh, why in 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 Tunisia we say Asleman Beslema, not the Salam Aleikum? Uh, uh, why we have the olive uh, oil, uh, oil tree, you know, why the Phoenician come, 
this is the the one the vandals are have uh, the the impact of the of the the, the Tunisian culture uh, i think this is this is what the, the digital tourism can be for me you know not only to create the the awareness of of the of the place but also to show them the context uh, the context we discussed about the in the beginning uh, about the south africa the south africa about this the song and the culture everything the people should understand and this is all what we need from from me my, myself i need to be the the, the the digital the digital tourism tools can be like a assistance assistance for tourists assistance for the the policy makers uh, they can they can really regulate the process to 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 protect the the assistance for uh, for 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 the people uh, managing the managing the uh, I don't know the savanna the the wildlife pre prevention etc etc for those to 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 create the sustainability just because the, the we are not able to create the sustainable tourism and the, the digital tourism without uh, uh, and also for every every people uh, what, for example in in Poland when I work with the with the one cluster touristic cluster. Uh, I discovered that, for example, the it's very easy to use the digital solutions to bring the local uh, 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 local people who are not connected to the tourist uh, uh, sector very uh, to make it closer to the tourist sector. For example, those who uh, who uh, made some um, trainings, you know, for strongmen. They, they 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 were focused they they, they were focused on, uh, uh, on on the local on the local society but having the very very easy tool uh, providing them very easy digital tools they can bring them and offer very short training for the people who came for three or four days just to visit and to the, and, and now they extend they extend their the, the, their business I I imagine I'm very frequently visit the visit the the Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, and then um, I see they they everyone is struggling for okay what can we do to bring more tourism, and 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 they never ask about what can we do the the the, the not to rely on the tourists what can we what will happen if if the if the for example next COVID will come. What was the strategy in, 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 for Tunisia? So I think this, I have a plenty of questions, but I think that, that what we need, and this is the very, very beginning and very uh, um, important questions. How can, what could be outcome, expectation, what could be outcome of our meetings? How can we address these questions to the stakeholders and the, the, to the governments and the people who, who are really interested in, 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 in the business, uh, uh, the touristic business? Because the, the tourism is not only this is the business. Sorry, it's not it's business to attract people to come to see and to get uh, to provide them the or, or to deliver the the best experience to them. So so, but in fact, we should don't remind that they will con they they will need our electricity. They will need the water, our resources, everything. They will have the they will they will create the wastes. They will create everything. So not not only the the, the don't forget the every um, everything has two sides. So so this is the this is uh, what is my remarks uh, on it. Uh, don't think about the tool only the tool, but uh, about the consequences of using the, the tool and how can we use the tool in, in that case. So I think the design thinking for it is this is the, the very strong demand from my point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marcin. Thank you for your uh, information. Uh, you have uh, noted most of your, your points uh, you have raised. Uh, definitely, uh, we'll come back to you again. And now uh, we'll kind of take uh, some collated questions, uh, which uh, was shared with us in the course of our uh, discussion in Africa. Uh, with some of the operators and uh, tourists themselves and, and all that. Uh, the fact we have, we'll just take some of them. And uh, I know we have answered some already. Uh, but first of all, uh, I'll take the first one. It's a what's digitalization approach? 
can be implemented to enhance value chain synergy in the African tourism sector for enabling smart interactions between the tourism public agencies, the site providers, tour operators, and as well as the tourists themselves and uh, uh, visitors. So uh, this question is actually coming in respect of, uh, uh, of course, the digitalization space. Uh, how do we get started in, in Africa? And probably from South Africa, uh, in Egypt, uh, probably there's something already happening, but uh, they want to see a kind of uh, a close loop, you know, in the value chain. You know, not the private providers going digital and the public are still on, uh, on using their paperwork and stuff like that. They want to see some kind of synergy in order for them for, to create some kind of smart interactions. You know, uh, this is part of what they would like to see. And uh, if uh, somebody have any comments on this or some kind of inputs uh, to this first question, uh, you are welcome, uh, please. Uh, Mr. Tulani, uh, probably maybe I should come to you uh, because uh, you were the former CEO of the South African Tourism uh, Agency, so uh, probably you have you could have some uh, input for uh, to this, uh, Mr. Tulani. Yeah, I, I had already uh, volunteered. <laughs> volunteered uh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think the. The point of departure for me is to understand that uh, we, we come from an environment where we, we have chopped a lot of trees. Uh, putting together brochures was very exciting and creating uh, information, tourism uh, arrival information kiosks has been very, very uh, useful in the past. Where we are now with the digitization, we, we should have dynamic tourism information centers. What, what, I, what I mean by that is that when you arrive in a country that is completely digitized, this is what we would like to see happening in Africa. You, you, you may ar arrive here with your full itinerary already in place, but those people usually would want to augment their experiences here. So when, when you arrive, for instance, you arrive at the airport, you should be able to get some automatic link to your phone that welcomes you to Johannesburg International Airport or, or Artambo or uh, King uh, Kenyatta Airport. With that information, if you accept the invitation or the welcome, you click through, you should then immediately be initiated into an information platform that says if you're looking for um, the lifestyle experiences, if you're looking for museums in this place, places of interest for tourists, just register here. And it must be free. The other thing that must happen is that it, this particular tool should be able to operate not on a Wi-Fi environment, you should be able to link this information even when you are outside of the Wi-Fi environment. For the duration of your stay in this country, you should be able to interact with this tool and get to various places. It should also allow you a navigation uh, or GPS possibility so that when you have shown interest for various tourism experiences, the tool should be able to take you there and experience this. It must also enable you to book this experience. So you're talking about a technology that has moved away from your traditional information and signage to the digital everything. So yes, I, I do want to find a, a museum. I do want to find a stadium but I don't need a paper map for this. I don't even, even on the road, it, the signs in different countries can be confusing. I mean, uh, I, I remember in, in, in Brussels, we, we all 
those of us who are English speaking will write Brussels in the English way, but you get to Brussels. It is not spelled like Brussels in English. It is spelled differently. You go to Germany, you go to Italy. So those things will confuse you. But if you have a GPS or navigation system that you, you, you downloaded when you arrived at the airport, then you are able to be directed using this tool. It must, that, that's the kind of thing that um, I think when you talk about digitalization and uh, talking about uh, uh, tourism information, uh, for me, it's really beyond simply getting uh, the basic information. So I've said it must be able to navigate you different uh, experiences, the ability to have a booking engine in it and a payment gateway in it. So you can pay for these experiences. Yes, you can choose to pay uh, on site if you think that the, the platform is not secure, but that's the, a, a kind of environment that I see as a, an answer, maybe in a long uh, winded way, but that's a tourist visitor information that I think is dynamic, is relevant. It is with, it moves with the, the current times. Uh, Ken, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you as well. Uh, detailed um, response. I uh, really appreciate your feedback. And uh, yes, please. Can I, yes, please. Can I, yes, please. Uh, yes, please. Just give a yeah. small yes. comment, let's say. Uh, again, turning back to sharing the experience. You know, Italy is divided into 20 regions. And in every region, there are uh, small, um, let's say, municipalities. And actually, every each municipality would like to have its own system, its own uh, app to promote the territory. So what we have right now here in Italy, and actually it's a good example because we are quite uh, ahead with tourism, no? So we have Booking, we have Airbnb, we have other platforms, international platforms. Then we have local uh, platforms. Then we have... Uh, applications from authorities, government applications. Then we have uh, small business uh, apps for tourism that all uh, struggles between each other. For example, we are responsible, we are the main vendor of community of Bari, not community, uh, municipality of Bari. It's quite big municipality, but we cannot guarantee even if we sign the contract if we, even if we develop uh, the sub even if we issue the sub we cannot guarantee that every tourist when uh, he comes to bari can uh, can see the sub so it we talk about the promotion we talk about possibility and uh, so what i want to tell that i think it's very utopic to think that it's possible to make one platform, one big portal, because of different countries, even inside Africa, different issues inside Africa, different issues even inside every small country and big country in Africa. I don't think, uh, and well, uh, technologically, uh, you know, for example, Italy declared 5G. We don't have even 2G sometimes here in Italy. And we talk about quite small territory, very good cover. So I don't know <laughs> if it's possible just to have perfect connection uh, um, uh, in an airport just to download the perfect app. So it's quite, um, I'm com quite um, not sure about it. I think it's better to offer different kind of opportunities, maybe to uh, somehow uh, choose one, two, three main lines, guidelines uh, for uh, a country, and then to follow this guideline. But uh, the fact is not to have this globalization, uh, it's very important not to forget each small detail of the country, um, each country in Africa. So I think the problems of Tunis uh, is different from uh, problems of uh, Kenya, for example. So uh, thank you. That, that's thank the you. main point. Thank you so much. We appreciate uh, your input. And uh, Tulani and Zima, please, uh, you raise your hand. Yeah, I, I, I just want to maybe uh, address this issue. It's not a direct response to Kathy. Um, I, I, I talk as an African first. 
Then secondly, I'll talk as a South African. The third layer I'll talk as someone who comes from a province of Gauteng. And then uh, the, the next layer is I'll talk about someone who comes from Johannesburg in Gauteng. Now, what am I actually telling you? We're not talking about a, a solution for Africa as one platform. It, it is important, yes, that when a person is uh, making a decision about uh, going on holiday, they will think of a particular experience. If they are looking for a, an ice skating experience, can you and I as Africans, as the continent of Africa, are eliminated in that process? But if someone is talking about a safari experience, we become a, a, a competitor, we become a player in the continent of Africa before they decide which country in Africa is going to give them a better safari experience. And then once they've decided on a country, then they go to a particular a province. So you arrive at a particular airport in, in, a, in a country. So in South Africa, just to make sure that this point is clear from my point of view, I, I, I'm happy to have a tool when someone has decided they are, they've made up their minds, they, are, they want a safari experience, they will go to Africa and they will go to South Africa. When they arrive at a, a point of entry in South Africa, at that point, they have got a tool which will link them to the country. And in this tool will then have the tap downs of uh, saying which province in this South Africa do I want to be? What type of experiences do I want to have? And someone was talking about solutions earlier on. That's what we, we, from our side, we're trying to avoid, to, to make sure that this one, you don't go from province to province, from city to city and download different uh, tools. That's silo operation. So if we can consolidate in South Africa, and you decide the provinces, you tap down, you go into the province, what experiences in this province, up to the cities, we are quite happy with that. Um, let, let me stop it at that. I'm, I'm saying from our point of view, we may not have a, a, a perfect solution, but for the time being, and we're able to load all the, the various experiences. It is a question of what interest you're going to be chasing. Thanks, uh, Ken. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, there was uh, indication also from Ayanda. Please, uh, Ayanda. Yes. Thank you so much. And really, this is not a response to anyone, but I just want to make this, um, rather maybe bring this perspective that, you know, I've seen whenever we try to implement technology and we start with technology, we we end up missing a lot of elements that could enhance the development of a proper tool using technology that could capture the things that we want done. So perhaps what I would like to suggest is that in trying to come up with a digital approach, perhaps first we need to put some structures in place that are going to do one of many things. Firstly, understand um, depending on what stakeholder we're trying to address, I guess. But if we're trying to look, maybe I'll give an example with an African approach. An African approach, probably very tough to do, but I mean, the, the key element that could bring people together is to try and see what forum of like-minded people who are represented in many countries can come together and start to create a framework that could inform how we want to approach digitization in the tourism sector in Africa. After, after for instance, uh, presents a lot of opportunities as a free trade platform for all of Africans. I'm not saying it is, it is what we should do. I'm just giving an example because this already Africans have bought into this platform. You just need champions who have the passion and who can give direction in terms of what each country looks like. What are the needs of the tourism in these countries? How do we then plan for those people not using technology first? And how do we meet these touch points that we want to meet? We're talking about sustainability. We're talking about getting tourists into our countries. We want to understand who is, who is fully dependent on tourism and who's not. Because 
in that already you can see who's going to put a lot more time and dedication to doing something and who's not. You want to make sure you've got a committee that's going to drive this from the top before you even get to the elements of what technology you need to put in place to do what. And I really think that if we don't start there, we could end up lost in terms of what is it that we're really trying to achieve either at an African level or even at a regional level. Let's put the structures in place. Let's understand the impetus of what we're trying to do. Let's get the right champions in place, right ambassadors in place, right to the bottom part where we even have, and, and I like, uh, by the way, um, Mr. Tulani's idea where you have an app, but you could even have ambassadors at the airport who have the app and who try to guide people in the beginning until the app is completely socialized and it's a norm. It doesn't matter how it's how it gets there in the end, but I really think at the top, it's important to get that right. Uh, that's that's just what, something I wanted to bring to the attention of this group. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, yes, that is really uh, highlighting. Uh, okay, uh, what's the question? The first question is also all about. Uh, definitely, it's also about the value chain, how we create the synergy, how the informations are being disseminated, and, and several other layers. Uh, thank you for your remark. Uh, we have taken note of that as well. And I would like to um, ask Mr. Siabulela uh, to provide us some kind of uh, input uh, uh, in respect of this uh, value chain dig digitalization. Uh, Mr. Siabulela, you are welcome. Uh, good, good, good afternoon. Uh, I think it, in South Africa it's already afternoon. <laughs> and good morning to those that are still in the morning session. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah this has not been good morning for me. Uh, I had to start at the task to make sure that I am getting well for the weekend. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am but right now I feel better, though I am still at the doctor's place. I feel better. Yeah, and unfortunately, I've not heard some speakers. Uh, just my input was the uh, on what and said it is very much important that. Uh, proactive in ensuring that our members or the the, the 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 sector stakeholders are getting into this into the space through uh, this data and digital formation and making sure that all of this is within our uh, for, for, for business people in the sector to use, uh, to, to digitalize. And yeah, I've seen in some areas where people do not have access to the digital uh, interaction, interactive uh, solutions. Yeah, what we really need is to to encourage that and people to get in the space because it also makes people it makes it easy for businesses to 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 get into this in, into to, I mean to others their market. I'm not sure whether I'm clear. Uh, yeah. Uh, because what I believe is digital interaction, uh, it, it is important in lending, uh, in, in assisting, in fact, and leading uh, uh, entrepreneurs and all for destination, uh, destinations uh, to adapt uh, in, in digital platforms and make you of the analytics and collaborate with all the other uh, like in the other the, the last uh, conference that we had we was we, we, we ended in collaboration uh, is the new currency you know 
Uh, but as long as what you, I think, will lead to sustainability of the business and to sustainability of the sector, the tourism sector. And I'm so worried that I've not yet Umabu uh, Unzema when he was speaking because my phone was my my phone was not really getting in into the into zoom yeah digitalization your is is very important and also we need to make sure that we get our people aware of what is going on like today there was another zoom by a financial services entity in the eastern cape when they were saying now they are digitalizing even the process of getting a loan you get online the process of uh, of of support and assistance you just get online you don't need to go to the offices that's what we also need in the in in the tourist space like here, struggling to 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 get a conference space travel hotel to hotel because I'm there's an there's a conference that we're busy organizing. If we had one digital platform where we get into a book and conference venue and voila and confirm the dates and do whatever before even going there into the venue, that will make things easy for us. You know Thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, see, uh, you're still speaking? No, no, no. Not okay, me. thank you, thank you for your feedback. We really appreciate. And uh, there are several questions on this, uh, on this, uh, uh, which you have all received. Uh, probably, uh, I would like just to take one more question, and uh, we look at uh, the roadmap which we could. You know, how can we create impactful digital leadership in the African tourism sector as a tool for promotion of corporate social responsibility? So this is one of the heavy questions uh, which uh, would like us to also think about. This could be a kind of a response uh, from, from you speakers. I would like everyone to go through these questions and uh, provide us some kind of feedback and uh, right now, uh, due to the time that is remaining, I would like us to focus more on the roadmap. What should be the next, what should be the roadmap? And how, what is the next step for Africa? So do we have, should we create a think tank of uh, digital roadmap in the tourism sector or digital tourism in the digital sector? Uh, these are some of the questions and what should be the next step and looking at the value chain, should we also have a, some kind of a demonstration project whereby we take in all views of all the stakeholders into, uh, into account. As just like what uh, Ayanda have also mentioned, we need a kind of uh, input from also from different stakeholders in Africa. So from my side, I think we we'll need a kind of a, a sustainable roadmap and, uh, and supported also with a concrete demonstration program. So I wouldn't know if somebody wants to, con uh, con this, is, this is about, uh, we are trying to round up now. Um, we are looking at a sustainable roadmap and supported with a demonstration project or a program. If I uh, uh, can co contribute to, to, to your to your questions, uh, uh, I think that uh, what we need this is the, the the biggest problem of all organizations. They are more about the lobbying instead of the the advising. Uh, it, it's not the the <laughs> if we want to create the roadmap, the roadmap is not related to any interest. If you open the map. You see the you, you see the roads, you see the, the, the paths, you 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 see the things we are not uh, dependent on on, on the, your your political or the business provenience. If you if, so, uh, I think that uh, that that our organization like Adel in that 
this is to to help to provide the this uh, object maximum independent uh, independent um, advisory to to the stakeholders to and i think that it should work like uh, the think tank and prepare the white papers i had the opportunity to take part in the cyprus in the conference uh, dedicated to the, the the changes environmental changes and then and, and the impact how can it impact and that uh, there was the guy from the club uh, rome club or rome club of rome something like that the organization which consists the intellectuals guy uh, who advise prepare the recommendation and i see and i think that what can we provide we can provide this white papers we can create the white papers or create that document that can be delivered to the stakeholders and and uh, this is our role we can do it we can do it from the the different perspective because we can provide uh, either um, the technical or the technology advisory either as a strategic advisory and i think we can we can do it in on in all levels and and it will be the real outcome because otherwise we will discuss the discussion is very fruitful because we can meet meet each other we can exchange our uh, uh, our thoughts but in fact we are we have no impact on 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 the stakeholders so i think that if you want if we if we won't uh, be um, you know ignored or just to discuss we should deliver something and i think this is the, the first meeting that we can plan to create the roadmap and create the, the to really answer uh, answer and written down our recommendation for all your question you put uh, on, on your paper this is this is that i think the the, the the direction that we can really go or follow. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other comments from anyone? Uh, Ayanda, you have comments? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. I like that idea. I think we can group ourselves um, depending on the disciplines that we believe we could add value to and we can decide to tackle each one as a white paper. I think that's a great idea. And then uh, we can, I mean, I, I think I'd like to share that offline, whatever I was thinking. But yeah, I like the idea. And perhaps then we can have a, a different session that go into each one of the white papers and discuss them collectively to see one how can we then put a generic uh, roadmap for each one of these questions that talks gener gen generally and that can be applied in any region. I think that that would be my line of thought initially. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any other comments from anyone? Uh, we are just looking at the next steps. Uh, what should be what should be the outcome of this uh, webinar? Uh, we'll, because we would like to see some concrete next step, and uh, also uh, with the possibility of a kind of a demonstration project, really. And that and this is part of what the first session webinar which we hosted. This is what they are looking at. This is what they want to to see as well, to practicalize what we have discussed. Uh, over to you, uh, Shia Bulele. You want to say something? I, I, I also agree that the roadmap is very, very much uh, important. Um, and also because it will give a strategic direction on how we can Hello, Mr. Siabulela. You are... give direction. Maybe you should go offline and speak. Uh, you are you are having some drops. We can hardly hear what you say. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Please. Should go off. No, without the, the uh, picture or something, the video. You can speak without the video. Okay. Yeah. Okay, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it keeps on coming. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, what I was saying is that it is important that we, we, we create the roadmap um, that, that will give us uh, the, the, the right direction and and also it will be as 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 uh, the speakers have said that it would be give some kind of an advisory uh, direction to how we can implement it in africa i am I'm, I'm, i i can i know that Af south africa is almost leading into the digitalization space space within the the the, the commerce sector so that will be very much important and it will provide more solutions to make sure that um, we prosper as the Africa we want. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Any other comments from anyone from the audience? Uh, we are just about closing. Can we take a comment or one or two comments? Okay, in that case, uh, well, thank you all for your time today. Uh, we've taken all the inputs and definitely uh, we'll come up with a summary of what we have discussed today. And also the video, uh, the recorded uh, session will be shared. Uh, you'll have a link to this as well uh, on YouTube. And at the same time, I really want to appreciate you all for your various inputs. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for being passionate about Africa and definitely we'll get it right. Uh, this is uh, the second step we are taking uh, towards uh, how digitalization would really um, help in the synergy of, of, the, uh, of, the, of the value chain uh, in the tourism sector. So uh, definitely I will be coming back to you uh, with the recorded version uh, of this uh, webinar and at the same time on the next steps. Definitely we'll have some kind of actionable next steps and I would like everyone to be part of this and also to uh, introduce us, probably introduce this, um, uh, uh, this, uh, this session, uh, what we are doing with the various governments in, in, in North in different regions in Africa uh, for them to be involved as well. And definitely, uh, I'm going to share this video with every one of you and we'll definitely also have um, uh, another meeting in the future. I just want to okay. use this opportunity to thank you all for your time. Thank you for all the ideas, for all what we have exchanged today. It's very valuable. And we really, we are looking forward to see uh, that Africa is really well positioned uh, in the context of utilization of digital technologies to enhance our interactivity in the tourism sector. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all and uh, thank you for your time and we'll definitely come back to you again. And uh, I just want to say thank you and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Thanks so thank much. You. Bye everybody. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>